kids know about the 420 vape zone. Every day I wake up and I get stoned. What's up, guys? It's Troy from 420vapezone.com. Today, in this special YouTube video, I'm going to tell a story about how I went to Germany last year. Stores in Bickel paid me to go to Germany. Actually, they didn't pay me. They paid for my trip to go to Germany, tour their factory, sign a special white volcano. Uh, on that way, I went with, with Jerry from the Troy and Jerry Show. We met up with Ralph from Lamart and got to try a special vape. Really cool trip. I'm going to talk about it in this video. Let's go. Not sure how I'm going to go about this one now that I've already introduced myself. But if you're new here, I normally review vapes, but YouTube isn't about that anymore. So from now on, all of my vape content is on my website. That's the .com. Just search for me, .com. You'll find me. That's where you'll find all of the reviews, the comparisons, the in-depth sessions, fun stuff. But YouTube ain't having it. So today we're doing a story time. Last summer, basically, uh, Stores and Bickle reached out to me. Stores and Bickle is the maker of the Mighty and the, the Volcano, the very famous vapes, very popular vapes. The Mighty is one of my favorite portable vapes. I'm a big fan. And uh, Stores and Bickle wanted me to join a group, and they didn't tell me much about it. So they, they invited me to go to Germany. And uh, my first thought was, shit, okay, like, if you're paying for everything, like, this sounds cool. How can I say no? How can I turn down an opportunity like that? Uh, so they, they brought Jerry along, and first thing I started doing was, like, reaching out, like, sneaky Pete. I'm like, hey, dude, I'm like, did you hear anything out of, like, Stores and Bickle? Like... Uh, something going down, like maybe something new. And he's like, yeah, they're, they're flying me to Germany. I'm like, okay, cool. Me too. So you'll be there. We talked to uh, vaporizer wizard, found out vaporizer wizard is going to be there too. So cool. So it's gotta be something vapor related. Something's, something's going down. Right. Didn't know much else about it. They didn't say anything uh, closer to the time of the trip, which was in October. They kind of sent some details that uh, said like you know we're gonna do some physical things on this trip we're gonna be hiking for miles and gonna be on your feet like the whole day and need to make sure that you bring some outdoor shoes some hiking shoes and some warm clothes because we're gonna go to a colder part of the the country and the, the black forest and I'm, I'm here as a california boy like shit mike this is gonna it's gonna be real like whatever we're doing gonna be real I, I flew to Newark New Jersey and then from there flew to Zurich Switzerland and they arranged it so Jerry and I would at least be arriving at the same time and they gave us instructions to like uh, look for somebody that has a stores and bickle thing or if you can't find them like call this number to to reach the little driver guy we get there and uh, immediately somebody somebody sees us and, and comes up to us and there are these two girls that were there from uh we found out that they're from a cbd company uh they but they they knew that we were arriving we were to be on the same shuttle as them and we were supposed to meet up with another person this uh, dante jordan but he did not show up for our shuttle we ended up looking around the airport for like 45 minutes and uh, this dude was a no-show so we, we took our shuttle back to the hotel and uh, we were told that that Stores and Bickle had gift bags for us at the hotel. And this whole time, Jerry and I were really worried. Like, we we didn't bring any weed to Germany because this thing just happened with the, the Russian girl and she was in trouble. And shit, you know, we don't want to get in trouble, so we didn't bring any weed. Uh, we had been on a, a flight for the last 15 hours. My edible wore off long ago. Uh, so I was really looking forward to, you know, having a, a smoke or something. So we get to the hotel and uh, the, the two girls that were with us checked in and uh, they they paid for their rooms and got their gift bags and, and left. And Jerry and I go up there and uh, our rooms were taken care of by, by stores and Bickle. And they gave us the gift bags and gave us our key cards. And we're both like, like is there weed in here? Like, we're gonna get some some weed? Because, damn. So we get to the hotel room. Uh, there was a new Mighty, and there was some, some peanuts and some CBD gum. 
and a hat and some other cool swag, some books. Uh, but no, no herb. Of course not, because it's Germany's medical only. Weed's not legal. We were kind of on our own uh, for that, at least for that first night, apparently, right? So that first night, Jerry and I, we kind of get settled and then we uh, we go out and we're we're looking for some food. We arrived in the in the early morning or relatively early morning. Uh, we arrived in Zurich, Switzerland, and we had to drive for like an hour to Tutlingen, Germany. And it was a beautiful little town. Beautiful little town. Uh, the coolest thing uh, coming into town in in Tutlingen, we didn't we didn't know what to expect. Like, is is the volcano factory like famous here? Like, it stores in Bickel, like really well known. No, no. The city, Tulingen, it's it's really well known for making high-end surgical and medical equipment. So, like, everything in the city is, like, geared towards uh, high-end stainless steel, surgical equipment, medical equipment, and that type of stuff. And there is, like, some, some different businesses that we saw that were named stores. Like, we saw, like, a store's chocolate store. So when we got back to the uh, factory, eventually I asked the, the, the marketing girl, I'm like, hey, is like the store's chocolate? Is that the same stores from stores in Bickle? And she explained, no, no. Nine stores is actually kind of a common German name, kind of like Smith in America. So stores is like a Smith and it's a pretty common surname over there. So stores is everywhere. And uh, in Tuling, and there's a lot of stores as well. Including there, we saw a statue of like a, a man handing off his his tools and his trade to a younger person, and it was like uh, some stores statue. But unrelated to stores and Bickle, let's have a vapor bag calm the nerves. Cause damn, I'm all I'm all worked up. And this story, when I was in Germany, this first this first night, we never we never found never found weed. Uh, so Jerry and I went out walking and we got food, which wasn't much, but we, uh, we found this little bar right on the Danube river and the Danube starts pretty near there. So the Danube was really small. We crossed on this little footbridge, uh, really cute. And, and there's a little, little like outdoor bar. So we had some daytime beers. We drank a few daytime beers at this outdoor bar, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful day, sunny, uh, nice girl at the little bar place. I forget what it was called, but uh, she was friendly, and she, she she spoke English. A lot of people there didn't speak English, and the girl selling us beers did. So it was nice to be able to ask her questions. And since we didn't have any weed, drinking was really our, our only option. I needed something to help us sleep at night. Right? Oh man, I didn't turn this thing on. Son of a bitch. And even though we didn't have any weed, I still had my mighty in my pocket because having the mighty in my pocket made me feel better. Like honest to God, it did. Like as soon as I opened that mighty in in the hotel room, I took it out of its box and slipped it into my pocket. Man, it made me feel better. Like I felt uncomfortable without weed and without my vapes and stuff like that. Uh, having, having the mighty in my pocket made me feel better. Even though I didn't have any weed, uh, it made me feel better. And I took some empty hits. I didn't turn it on, but I, I charged it up. I got it ready to go. And Jerry and I were looking for weed, but we couldn't find any. At one point, we were, we were sitting at this bar drinking beer, and we saw somebody go by with like a weed shirt. Like I, I saw like the leaf or what the, some thing on their shirt. And we were trying to flag them down. We were trying to, we were, we were like, hey, like, you smoke, like, you smoke, and he probably thought we were fucking creepers or something. He hightailed it out of there. Maybe he didn't speak English. I don't know. But, yeah, it, apparently finding weed in southern Germany is not easy. And the way we were going about it was probably guaranteed to fail or get us arrested. But after a few beers, we actually felt pretty good. Uh, we're going back to the hotel when we got the text from Sneaky Pete. Connected with Sneaky Pete, went back to the bar, drank more beers with Sneaky Pete uh, to the point where I drank too much. Jerry drank too much. Sneaky Pete didn't drink too much because he's Canadian and he's used to it. He's built for it. He's got like a different kind of body, different kind of blood. You know, those Canadians. 
me, American, I don't drink. I don't drink anymore. I stopped drinking more than 10 years, about about 10 years ago. I stopped drinking as a hobby. Uh, so now I really just drink every once in a while socially. So drinking in Germany, having seven Hefeweizens fucked me up. Like I got drunk. Like I was drunk. We were walking back to the hotel and I was so drunk. I'm like, I, like, I want something to smoke. I'm like, I'm looking for weed, but like, I just want something to smoke. And we passed by this like cigarette machine and I'm drunk off my tits and Sneaky Pete and Jerry were drunk. And Sneaky Pete's girlfriend was just like, yeah, just buy some cigarettes right here. You know, she's like, so we, this machine, just, you can just buy cigarettes right there on the machine in the street. Can't get weed anywhere, but you can buy cigarettes just fucking on this machine. Once we proved they were 18 and proved that we had money, I bought a pack of cigarettes and I smoked a cigarette and I was like, oh my God, this is the grossest thing. But it, oh my God, it also fucked me up way more because I hadn't had nicotine in a long ass time. Uh, and I hadn't smoked a cigarette in a long ass time. And after a bunch of beers, puffing down a, a cigarette, Jesus, really fucked me up. I got back to the hotel room and I remember like bouncing off the walls going to the going to the room it was just a I knew I knew it was bad bad times and I was really worried because the next day we're supposed to get picked up to go to the stores in Bickle factory at like 9 a.m and I have no idea what time it is it's like afternoon the sun is still up the sun is still up and I'm like wobbly drunk not a, not a good time zonk like on the bed I am out I'm done. Jerry, in the meantime, apparently realizes, hey, we're fucked up. It's 5 p.m. We need to get some, like, real food in us. Otherwise, we're going to be, like, hurting. He goes out. He tries to wake me up, but I'm I'm dead in my hotel. Uh, so he goes out. So Jerry goes out, and he buys, like, donor fries and a pizza. Comes back to the hotel room. Tries to wake me up. I am unconscious. He eats some and, and passes out. Later on, maybe at like nine o'clock, I wake up and, and I'm puking, I'm like hungover, hungry, thirsty. I, I go to the mini fridge, to the mini bar, and there's like two bottles of water in there. One is sparkling, one is non. I love sparkling water. Everybody in Germany while we were there, all the other people complained about all the sparkling water. I fucking loved it. I've been I've been sick from alcohol before. I've had hangovers before. I knew I had to like get a lot of water into me. So I I drink these two bottles of water and I start filling them up from the sink. And the sink water, the tap water in in, in Germany was delicious. The the tap water in Tutlingen was so good, especially compared to my water in California. My water in California fucking sucks. Like it tastes like pool water. Like I sometimes I rinse my mouth out in the shower and it's just like eh, it tastes like a swimming pool. It's like a swimming pool. Anyway, so I I drink a shit ton of water, go to bed. I, I text Jerry, no answer. End up waking up in the morning, meeting him for breakfast, feeling really good. Like not great, but surprised that I slept because I didn't have any weed. But really wanted to wake and bake. Like woke up like like damn. Like, I hope they, they got weed on the bus. Like, I hope they pick us up with weed on the bus. Like, that'd be really great, you know. Got my mighty in my pocket, charged up, ready to go. Get our breakfast. Meet Sneaky Pete and the Vaporizer Wizard down there. There's a bunch of people that we don't know. Uh, start seeing some people, and, and and people start coming up to us because they know who we are. A can, of, a can of Chrissy comes up, and I've, I've met her before. Uh, she introduces us to America, which I've seen her on Instagram before get on the bus they they introduce the themselves and we we get on the bus they take us to the stores in bickle factory still no weed but when we pulled up to the stores in bickle factory someone on the bus got off the bus and lit up a j or a spliff didn't know who it was but i, I we all smelled it and we were all joking about like yo like <laughs> what the fuck uh vaporizer wizard sneaky pete me and jerry were all looking we were on the lookout for weed they took us into the stores in bickle factory uh, showed off the factory when it was amazing really cool factory
the factory where the classic volcanoes, the hybrid volcanoes, the mighty, the crafty, all their stuff is made. Uh, again, it's in a relatively small town in Tutlingen. They want to be very transparent at this factory, so they built the whole building like out of glass. You drive by it, you drive up to it, you walk up to it, you can see what's going on inside. Everything is done in the open. It's a really nice, really well-architected, well-architecturally designed building. Really cool. Uh, we got to see how the volcanoes were made, how the mighties were made. Uh, they do really cool things at the factory, like making sure that the employees have a high happiness rate. For example, uh, employees come to work and, and they actually assemble the volcanoes or the mighties from start to finish. Like one person will pull the, the little base out of the bin and put the electronics on it and then the heater pump and the thing and then they'll test that and then they'll put on the heater core and the cone and the exterior and they'll test test it all shit. So like the the employee gets more satisfaction than just doing like assembly line things where like uh, volcanoes are going down assembly line and one person's just doing the button and then one person's doing the screens or whatever that those types of jobs suck they're really monotonous and you can like drift your brain off and just like you're just doing the motion you do that for a few years and you want to fucking die like i've, I've worked in assembly line shit it sucks it sucks source and bickle factory isn't assembly line stuff they they have worker satisfaction everything is daylight lit like they have uh glass ceiling and all that shit so like there's natural sunlight coming in everywhere really cool automated uh, inventory system so like their, their warehouse is, isn't people it's it's a machine that does all the stacking and they use these special crates for all of their uh supplies all of their all of their parts and all of their their finished products go into the same style of bin that this uh, automated machine uses for its like warehousing Really cool shit, really cool forward looking shit. Jurgen, the CEO, the, the designer guy of the Volcano, gave us these special headsets and toured us around the factory and showed us all of the things. Get to see a lot of employees. All the employees were very happy, excited to see people. Uh, it, was a, it was a really cool experience. We went to the cafeteria, had lunch with the employees. At that point, uh, I was like, borderline ill from like withdrawals like i was like you know like my shit was flushed and i was like angry weird yeah uh, so i i i asked bjergen i'm like hey is there any way you can give me some weed like do you have anything that you can you can loan me here and uh he's like oh well we'll have more later today but uh i understand that you you're uh need it more for your your daily medicine i'm like yeah I'm like i use it for my social anxiety and doing all of these social things for me kind of makes me like on the edge so i'm a better more social version of me with a little weed and he, he gave me uh one of the little capsule caddies of uh of herb and I already had my mighty in my pocket, so I'm like, I just, can I just vape outside? And he's like, yeah, vape right on the balcony. And I went out and started vaping. And as soon as I started vaping, people like like smelled it and and started started coming around. I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't I didn't share my mighty at first. <laughs> like at first, I'm like, I'm like sorry, bro, this first capsule is mine. I'll pull out another capsule and pass it, but this first capsule, it's mine. I don't know you I don't know everybody here yet <laughs> like I'll I'll pass this but I only got four capsules the first one's mine I was kind of a dick about it no regrets no regrets <laughs> so I didn't I didn't share the first capsule but I did share the second capsule Jerry came out sneaky Pete came out we met this uh professional motocross guy who's like a, a cannabis motocross person uh we met some some DJs some music people who came out they were smoking smoking spliffs. They didn't even want to share the vape. They had their own a little lunchtime pre-sesh uh, at the at the factory, and then did more on the on the tour, and then we loaded up on the bus and drove out to this like 
monastery. Like we left town probably 20 minutes outside of town, got to this like monastery, huge, like biggest monastery in South Germany. Uh, everybody at this monastery like lives off the land there. Like they do all their own shit. Really cool, beautiful, beautiful country. Right at the the valley of the Danube River. We uh, we get out and we walk and we're on this road. He introduced us to Jurgen is there and he, Jurgen is there the whole time. Uh, he introduced us to this guy who is like an awareness specialist, a real Zen Buddhist kind of monk person. And he uh, he does the the raisin thing with us where he he teaches us some some things about mindfulness and we kind of do this like thirty minute guided meditation that's not really told as a guided meditation it's told as like a raisin experiment and he passed out raisins three times and each time we ate the raisin step by step first by you know rolling it in our fingers and then listening to it and smelling it and rolling it in our tongue and rolling it with our teeth and nibbling pieces of it off and letting it dissolve and it's a it's a long exercise that teaches you awareness in a, a, a subtle way it's a really cool experiment uh, i actually want to make that video on my own leave a comment if that's something that you're interested in i might do it on the troy and jerry show i don't know but it's a it's a fun topic for me because i, I like aware, awareness i think mindfulness and awareness uh, is really good and it was really cool that stores and bickle was putting that into this experience for us so not only did Jerry and I and these other 50 journalists and influencers and uh, personalities, uh, not only did we go there and get like a tour of the factory uh, to, to see like how well they're made and how good the company treats their employees and all that, uh, but we're also getting this uh, life experience like with like-minded people. We're all doing this thing to learn about mindfulness. And the whole hike to where we were going, uh, and we didn't really know where we were going uh, yet. Uh, we just knew that hopefully there's weed there, because at this point, nobody had weed except for me. And I did vape my four capsules during the first part of the walk. But during the walk, the uh, the mindfulness guy, uh, the mindfulness guy, by the way, later on at the dinner, I sat next to this dude and I took his little name tag off of the table so that I could remember his name. And it's Daniel Bierstecker. He led this hike to where we were going. And, and again, we didn't know where we were going. Uh, we were walking through cornfields and up this little gravel road. At one point we saw this lady come in to the side of the monastery and bought a bunch of produce. It was really cool to see. So we're doing this mindful hike up and at, at one point where we we had walked for like an hour we were blindfolded for a while while walking like jerry guided me while i was blindfolded and then i guided jerry while he was blindfolded it was a pretty neat experience without weed uh all along the valley of the danube river beautiful beautiful scenery at one point we've been hiking for like an hour hour and a half we're getting tired getting hungry we're all ready to smoke we come to the base of this valley and we look up and there's like this fucking castle at the top of this like big rocky cliff it's way the fuck ups up it's like way up in the air way forward way up and the guy leading the hike is like that's where we're going that's that's the end that's where we're that's where the party is and everybody's like yeah fuck you like that's still really far and really high up there no we nobody knew if this was serious or not but we kept on hiking we get closer to the cliffs and there's like a bunch of buildings at the base of the cliffs and we're all like oh that's that's probably where it's at that's where we're going right there there's people there that's probably probably the place get to the buildings and nope right behind right behind the buildings the trail goes like straight up the freaking mountains and uh up the freaking mountain we went and it was intense. This shit got intense. This was like a slippery ass mountain. Like people were, were, some people were not wearing appropriate shoes. Some people couldn't climb the, the mountain. Uh, I'm told that a van had to take some people 
around. There was an alternate route we found out later. We climbed the mountain. Uh, I was I was the last one to, to make it. Like I started out middle of the pack. And by the end, like everybody had like passed me. And I was like telling Jerry, I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm like, I'm going to die here. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to fucking die. I was all used to like sea level. I, I live near the beach. So going to like Germany and going up the mountains and shit, man, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get air. Needed my weed. It was a rough time. It was a rough time. But then we get to the top and it's this amazing castle. And the castle is from like the 1400s. And I'm blown away. Like I'm walking through the keep and like going up the stone stairs, like and going through the little gate. And I'm looking around, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, this shit right here is already a hundred or more years old. This is like hundreds of years older than America. Like everything here is like older than America. It just blew my fucking mind. Like it suddenly made me feel, it made me feel very small. And I like that. I, li I like, I don't like, I don't feel small. You know what I mean? Uh, like a, the, the small world meditation thing where you imagine looking at, at yourself from the moon and you see all the other people in, in that same view and imagine that they're all having similar things going on in their life. Some of them have way crazier chaos in their lives. Some of them have it easy. But all those people have their own things. So it makes your things seem small potatoes. Walking through that castle made me feel that way. It was like, damn, this really gives you a sense of self. This uh, super old castle has been kind of updated a little bit. There's like a, a house that, you know, it's I mean, whatever. We don't get into the de details of, of history because I'm not a historian. Uh, but we get there and there's a volcano set up. Yeah. And he hands out some more capsules. He's got more capsules loaded up and there's alcohol and shit. And we all start drinking and vaping. And uh, I'm still recovering from the hike. And this is where we start to like vape with other people and hang out with other people. There's some beautiful scenes up there, some beautiful scenery. There's a, a lookout in the, in the one side of the mountain where you could like have a 360 degree view of like the whole countryside. Amazing, amazing to see the history around the grounds, the castle grounds, uh, all the old castle stuff. And then they, they wanted to interview me. So they, they took me to this room where they had like all these studio lights set up. Now, earlier in the day, they had already presented the white volcano. So let me, I guess once we're all at the party, uh, Jurgen called us all around and he introduced the white peace volcano, the white with love for peace volcano. They were going to make a thousand of them. And for like every one sold, they were going to give like a hundred bucks to charity to like the, like a Ukraine fund or something, something like that. A uh, really cool initiative that they were doing with the white ones and uh, they're numbered and they only made like a thousand. And then they told us that, that we would be signing it. They said like all of the people there would be signing this and then they were going to auction it off. So that was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, and then we were told to enjoy the party. They would have dinner a little later. After a few bowls and a few drinks, they they invited me to a special room and they wanted to interview me. They wanted to have like a, a conversation with me about peace and about vaporizers and about myself. After a few questions, Jurgen comes in and the interview includes Jurgen and uh, really had a, a really good heart to heart talking with, with them. It was really cool uh, vaping with, with Jurgen the white volcano had been sitting on a pedestal in between Jurgen and I in this uh, interview. And at one point he pulled out a, a marker and he invited me to be the first person to sign it. I was so touched that I was given the first opportunity to sign this white volcano. It really made me emotional. Like I was, I was really touched. I, I, I almost cried just with the honor that was given to me to be the first person to write my name on such an epic piece. I actually insisted. I'm like, I'm like, I want you to sign it first. You're going to sign it. I want, I wanted Jurgen to sign it first. So Jurgen signed it first. And then I wrote my name on it after uh, that gave me time to like 
stop shaking because when they told me that I was going to be the first person to sign it, I was like, that was freaking shit. I, I just immediately had Parkinson's disease or something. It was crazy how nervous I got. Later on the night, they went around and they got everybody else and, and everybody else signed the white volcano. Jerry, while he was signing the white volcano, uh, broke the pen. The pen broke and blew a, a blob of ink all over the white volcano that they, they sold. Uh, this is known as the Jeroops incident. Good times. Uh, the meal at this party was absolutely epic. It was like a seven course meal or something like that. Everything on the plates were found and killed or cooked from the local grounds, like all of the vegetables, all of the flowers. We had edible flowers. All of the meats, we had venison backstrap, and there was like seafood, some some fish from the river, I think. And there's some crayfish from the river, I guess, is what they were. Uh, all kinds of vegetables and unique foods that were all local from the actual like castle grounds and from the monastery. And everything was amazing. Like it was Michelin star level amazing. The level of service, the the way they, the food was served all at the same time to all the people. And it was all served by Jurgen's family. His wife and his daughters were all in charge of the food preparation and the food service. It wasn't catered out. It was the family. It was the family of the CEO who lives there in that castle. Like that castle is where he lives. Like that's, that's his home. He invited us into his home, held this party in his castle house, really gave us a treat, really gave us an experience. Yeah, it was incredible. It was it was incredible. It was, it was very touching. The DJ who who was part of the journey got up there and was playing music. He was there. He was the DJ for the night. Really epic experience. Uh, we were told that when you want to go home or go back to the hotel, they have shuttle vans waiting. Some people left shortly after dinner. Jerry and I and Sneaky Pete and they had a, a big campfire going. So we we hung out outside, vaping more bowls. Uh, Jurgen came out and we vaped more bowls. We, uh, I broke out the, the dual volcano gas mask and we put up put two bags on that and we vaped volcano bags around the campfire, passing the mighty, passing the crafty. It was a wonderful, wonderful and truly epic experience. Unforgettable. It was an unforgettable experience. Got back to the hotel, crashed hard, happy to have weed. Came, I came home with like extra capsules of, of, of herb to smoke. Life was good. Life was good. The next day, they picked us up again, went out on a big boat, took this big boat tour. It was really cool. Vaped more bowls. Everybody was vaping bowls on the boat. And then after after that, they said, all right, this is it. Like, we're going to boat you back. We're going to bus you back to the hotel. And the rest of the trip is you're on your own. Enjoy your time in Germany or wherever, or do whatever. And that's it. See you later. And uh, we got back to the hotel and immediately put out the APB. We, we put out on, on the Troy and Jerry show and the 420 Vapes on Instagram. Hey, if you're in Southern Germany or North Switzerland or if you're anywhere around Tulingen, and uh, we got some people, we got some people to connect with. And uh, one of those people, and one of those people was the maker of the Tetra P80. One of my favorite vapes, badass vaporizers. Uh, we found ourselves in a secret location somewhere in Germany with Ralph from Lamart and some other people that traveled to Sesh with us. Very cool. We also found ourselves with some very high quality Moroccan hash. And we got to test an unreleased product, which has been a secret up until now at the point of this video coming out. That secret device, which I talked about in my streams, we talked about it in the stream. And I, I mentioned that during my, my trip, I did get to test a vaporizer and it was one of the most potent and flavorful devices I've ever ta tasted. And it wasn't Soros and Bickle. That product was this. This is the the Bake or the Bake X. This product was actually designed for hash because hash is very popular in Europe and there's no real quality vaporizers that are designed for traditional hash. And it's this guy. This guy was designed for hash. Does some different approach. 
uh, for heating. It's really flavorful with an all glass vapor pack. Check out my website if you're interested in, in that little device. Uh, but we got the sesh with with Ralph from Lamart, and he brought his vapes, including the new bake uh, and uh, his old vapes, like the Tetra P80. We found ourselves with a bunch of different strains and the hash and wow what an epic sesh it was the highest i had been in days uh we we smoked the hell out of this hotel room in uh, in germany uh got ridiculously high the vaporizer wizard was there sneaky pete was there and we were all just ripped like the whole quadrant of the hotel that we were in just smelled like a cypress hill concert like it was dank like at one point somebody had gone outside and was like yo the whole hall hallway it's like we went out in the, in the hallway and like started opening the windows in the hallways uh just to like blow things out man we all got real faded and then we went out and we got some indian food so eating dinner with with the vaporizer wizard and jerry and our new friends uh we had some indian food right there in tootlingen and it was phenomenal nobody spoke any english so we had to use like the google translate thing to like translate the menu and figure out what the fuck we wanted and then point things to to order uh the mango curry the chicken mango curry was wow worthy jerry insisted on ordering vegetarian chicken tikka masala there was struggles there with uh ordering but uh, eventually he got food and, and it was delicious everybody's food was delicious i would have loved to have a sesh with jurgen and ralph from lamart i think those two uh should connect because ralph really knows heaters and the best ways to, to use power to heat herbs and obviously Jurgen can make shit happen oh my god this is a 40 we've been going for 48 minutes this is crazy high as shit I didn't even vape on the bake I did technically before I even started this video so I guess that counts I guess that counts so that's it. That's uh, that's my story of uh, going to Germany and touring the stores in Bickel Volcano Factory, meeting with Ralph from Lamart. We came home like the next day on like Sunday. It's a long ass flight from from Zurich. Oh, I'm I'm on my way back. Uh, oh the wait, we're not done yet. We're not done. So. The morning of of uh, our return flight, the, the the night the night of a return flight, we had Sneaky Pete and Vaporizer Wizard over, and just tried to like vape whatever we had left, like a late night sesh, like tried to crush it, couldn't do it. So Jerry and I tried to crush it, couldn't do it. Leaves me in the morning with like half a gram of Moroccan hash, and probably an eighth of flour. And uh, I promised the person that brought the Moroccan hash that it wouldn't go to waste. So I crammed the, that half gram into a Storrs and Bickle capsule. Like I just crammed it into a capsule and I, I put it in my Mighty. From the moment I woke up, that's, that's when I did it. I cranked my Mighty to 410 and I vaped. I started vaping it. Uh, brush my teeth, vape in the hash, took a shower, vape in the hash, you know, washing my armpits, vape in the hash, uh, took my morning shit, vape in the hash, took another shower, because once you shit after your shower, you gotta you know, take a shower again. So took a took another shower, vape in the hash. The whole time I was vaping this hash. You know, I get dressed, I'm vaping the hash, making sure all my, my luggage is packed right, still vaping the hash. Clean my my cooling unit. Vape another vape a little hash again, you know, cleaning, cleaning cooling it some more. Uh, just vape this thing for like an hour, dude. Like I was vaping this Moroccan hash ball for like 40 minutes, just coughing my face off. It was just like vaping and coughing, just chucking clouds. Like this thing of hash was just chucking clouds. Got ridiculously stoned. 
I was so stoned. Went down, had the best breakfast. Not really, but it was really good breakfast. I ate a bunch of like German cheeses, a bunch of a uh, bunch of juice and a bunch of little breads and sausages and stuff. Really good breakfast. I really liked the the breakfast at that hotel. Went back upstairs to double check. Checked my room. Smelled like weed really bad. Checked Jerry's room. Smelled like f fucking death. Smelled like somebody fucking died in there. Smelled so goddamn bad. I felt I felt bad for whoever had to open that room. Oh my god. It was that pizza that Jerry bought on the first night there. The one that we were supposed to eat for drunk. I guess it was my pizza. It molded, it grew some nasty shit, and it just sat there the whole time for like four days while we were in Germany. The fourth day, it really stunk. It was really bad. But it wasn't my problem. It wasn't my problem. Got a got a shuttle ride back uh, to Zurich. Uh, went on the Autobahn, drove really fast. I had some time to spare. So we stopped at the Rhine Falls. Check out the Rhine Falls. Spent some time at the Rhine Falls. Really cool to see the waterfalls there on the Rhine River in Switzerland. Got back to the airport, jumped on my flight, came home. It was fun. Stores and Bickle put me up business class the whole time for the flight. It was a wonderful trip. Wonderful trip. At this point, thank you for watching. Thank you, Stores and Bickle, for sending me to Germany. You ever want me to go again? Happy to. It was damn cool. It was damn cool. I can't say anything more than that. Thanks for watching. Peace. Damn, it was a long-ass video.